Hello everyone, my name is uh, Le Hoàng Nguyễn or Nguyễn Le Hoàng. Um, I'm uh, to, on, on the behalf of the BRAS collaboration today. I will talk online the development, calibration of current status of the BRAS peer experiment. Um, so, um, first I want to say thank you to like, the organization of like, the Mans University in, for this part trust and give me the, um, uh, the opportunity to give a talk. And also to pay respect to like, something like Johannes Gut, uh, Gutenberg, the old father of like, the fresh printing um, technologies. Uh, without him, we don't have like the spreading of knowledge, and we don't have like the modern world and then the past past today. And let's back to the content. I mean, like to 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 to, to our program. So uh, the uh, uh, um, the talk will be splitting into my main three parts. The first part will be broadband dark matter dish a shot with like this antenna. The second part is like the PSP setup, and the third part is the hidden photon sign run, and some uh, first uh, preliminary result. So. Um, so I mean, I, I, don't, I don't have to, to mention too much about, let's say, the, the, let's say the detail of this one because something like already mentioned really carefully by, by Stefan on Wednesday and then by Osamu yesterday already. But I just want to I mean, recap a little. For example, this idea is not new. It's from 10 years ago. And, then, uh, and even like the plot and this equation is come from the, um, come from the first original idea, um, papers. And you can see me like for like the photo the hidden photon and then the axon. The sensitivity is always scaling with with the uh, let's it uh, let's here uh, with the like the total surface area and then local dark, local dark matter than uh, local dark matter densities and also of course in the case of like the axon and axon light particle where something like is is also scaling with like the total magnetic field. So um, and of course the, I want to fresh it again so but but technique is something like is 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 they had the broadband sensitivity uh, broadband, sen, uh, broadband sensitivity to the last para, uh, parameter space and then we don't have the resonance but the resonance effects is compensated by the last surface area and um, so we tried to to build an experiment called BRAS, standing for like broadband radiometric action shirt that stay closer closest to like the ori the original idea. That means like adopting something like the the well meter uh, radio technologies. Uh, no, I mean like the ra the radio astronomy technologies and the um, and the uh, like light dark matter shirt. So in this case, merely the head brass is is most likely consists of like three main components. The first is the uh, parabolic mirror. It is our like the main mechanism of collection the uh, the signal. The second one we had the flat conversion panel. So in this case, like um, for example, for the red experiment, they use we try to use they they, uh, they they try to use something like the solenoid to create the signal. But in this case, we try to go a bit different. We try to use something like the permanent magnet to create the signal. So this will drive down the cost a lot, and then we can spend all the rest to something like having something like the bigger mirror or having the better broadband antenna and then the broadband uh, digital backend to process the signal. So this comes to like the, uh, the, our first prototype, the P experiment I mentioned. I, I, I think I have presented in, uh, in, in Freiburg uh, like three years ago. So uh, let's go to like the setup of the bus P experiment. So they have like, so as you can see, this is the 3D rendering of the bus P experiment. So you can see this is, had the three main components that I just mentioned. So the first one is the parabolic mirror. Yes, it's parabolic mirror. They have like the broadband receiver and this, this receiver is, of course, it's placed by at, at like the focal point of the parabolic mirror. And you can see this is, this two, this, this is the two main, two main component of like the, Radio telescope already, right? And the rest is we have like the flat conver con 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 conversion panel to creating the signal. So, and this is our realization in like the university in the University of Hamburg. We have all of them built already, all of them calibrate, all of them put into like the in operation, and they are housed inside in a 60 dB shielded room. So we are quite confident. We have no leak. I mean, like for no interference from outside also. So first we have like the, 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 the conversion panel, and we have the parabolic mirror, and then the broadband antenna from 12 to 18 gigahertz. We also have something like the digitizer that can produce something 8 gigasample per second. Let's go to each component. So as you can see, this is the parabolic mirror. It's the parabolic mirror, right? And um, we have the diameter of uh, 2.5 meter, and then have the four have have the focal length of like 4.8 uh, meter. The next component is something like the conversion panel. So in this case, like for the past P experiment, at this moment we are only looking for the hidden photon. So in this case, we're just mounting some uh, dummy aluminum panel. So this is the A24 dummy alu aluminum panel with the total surface of like about X panel is 
uh, uh, total surface of a six meter, six meter square. I mean, like, of course, I mean, like, the main ingredient for, like, a radio telescope is something like you need to be, like, the coherent wave that hitting the, the that, that hitting the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 parab the parabolic panel that, and then focusing the signal into our receiver. So, I mean, uh, um, we also simulating, uh, see, uh, simulating the, the effect of this one. You can see this is a really nice plane where that's going outside of our, going outside away from our uh, uh, con con conversion panel, hitting like the parabola and focusing exactly into our receiver. This result, I mean, this, this simulation already discussed by uh, Johannes Ulrich on Monday already. So, uh, the next question is, um, how can your system detect something like, like axion or axon light particle? So in this case, like we try to, and I mentioned you already, we try to use something like the permanent magnet. And, uh, and then three years ago in, 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 in Freiburg, I, went, I mentioned that I was using like, we are using like the Hubbard array. But uh, during the COVID, we uh, do um, the lockdown, so sorry, the lockdown, we do some simulation and realize that something like, oh, uh, it seems to be the radiation from like the Hubbard array is not, it's not giving any radiation because the field is canceled when it's, or when it's pop, uh, propagating. So we go into different configuration. I call this one is like the optimized binary profile. So you have something like the, let's say a, a single magnetic cube, a, per, a single permanent mag, uh, magnet cube, and then you put them side by side and then put a gap between them. So within the gap, there is something like a really strong field, it's, which is superposition from the field from or the cube magnet in, in, in the neighbor. So, and then we, we optimize it, and then we got something like a, a field between a gap about 0.9 Tesla. We buoy it, and then we, 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 uh, we measure it, and then this is really close to the number of 0.9, even higher, because something like we have like the contribution from the, from, from, from the, 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 the nearby magnet. So, yeah, and then the, you ask the question, so we have the gap, right? And then the radiation from the gap would be like the cylindrical wave. But if we have multiple gap, then it could come, become like a, a plane wave. Yes, we had a plan where we do a simulation and we had a really nice, really nice plan where coherently going away from the panel. And then, uh, of course, I mean, like this one is not like the, uh, the, the, the total power is only one third because something like about of the, of like the, uh, the theoretical and idea case because like we had the, 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 the total power is only scaling with like the total mag, uh, mag, uh, magnetized surface, right? So, um, and then now we go to the, the, the last component. This is our receiver and our digitizer. So as you can see, this is like this is our like signal flow. So the first one, this the, the whole setup is consisting of two mixing states. The first mixing state is from 12 to 18 gigahertz to like to 4 to 8 gigahertz. And after that, the second mixing state is 4 to 8 gigahertz to, to DC. After that, we have uh, an, an, an ADC. And this is the analog digital converter that converting the signal at the rate of 8 gigahertz per second. To, the, to, 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 like the, to, to, to sample and then we store the data in the PC, we're doing the interleaving and FFT after that. So let's go to each component. So we have like the, the uh, first is the analog front end. We have something like the Q-band antenna is manufacturing by the, by the expert in the uh, uh, Max, Planck, uh, Max Planck Institute for, Radio, for Radio Astronomy. Um, we had the Bradman receiver and this is the, it had the Bradman receiver and then this one doing like the first mixing site I have just mentioned. Um, it had the chance of free low noise amplifier, and the first one, of course, is operate at the 10k. Yes, this horn antenna is cool at the 10k. And uh, one special thing about this one is uh, this antenna, this horn antenna, can give you the output in two polarization. That means you have all the freedom of doing something like taking the data into polarization, and then you, for example, if you, if, for example, in the case of hidden photon, if you, if some some terrorist, he, he told me that I know, let's say, the distribution of like hidden photon polarization, then I can, can you do use this one to collect the data into polarization, re, uh, then uh, then uh, recorrelate them, and then have a really good sensitivity to hidden photon dark matter also. So. Uh, we do some calculation, some uh, some uh, some uh, some calibration. We can have some uh, some noise source also, similar to IDMX also, and we have some noise source. And then we also expect something like our horn antenna have the system temperature something like about something like about about 15, 15 Kelvin. But this is a closed horn antenna. So if you close the horn antenna, then you only have to be like the, the temperature from like the amplifier from the from from like the aperture, and then about 15 milli Kelvin. But when you when we open it, have a lot of noise. Probably one day when I when when I when I when I doing like the, uh, the 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 calibration the weather is so bad that we have something like some some noise from like the the the, the atmospheric and then it's leaking into the, the room 
That means we seem to be our uh, lab has 60 dB of light shielding, but it's not good enough. There must be some leaking and have to fix it. Right, so the last component. And so you see, that means like we have something like 4 gigahertz bandwidth. And to have 4 gigahertz bandwidth digitizing, we have a really fast ADC. We've met it. We have four, uh, four interleaf ADC at 2 gigahertz per second. That's when it leaves you to me, I guess, uh, give you to me, I guess for a second for like the, the, for the, for the, de, for the digitizing. This data is transferred to the computer after that we, we, we do interleaving and then FFT. So we can also have the GPU powered FFT and that can go to like really high resolution, 25 hertz in real time, almost. Yeah. So I have everything ready. Everything is, cal is, is calibrated. We are really taking data. So we have the first sign run. So the first sign run is only with like the aluminum dummy panel. And there is no magnet panel yet. So the first sign run is one in, in December. We have to like, we collect like 53 hours of data from 12 to 16 gigahertz with the resolution of 625. The second one in March in 83 hours is 14 to 18 gigahertz with a resolution of 625 hertz. And uh, look at this one. This is the intermediate frequency from at, at 4 gigahertz bandwidth. And it looks so ugly because something like we have to like infested by a lot of noise from the electronics, also from like, from outside, and then because we go to really high resolution, you will, so you be able to see me like some some uh, some remnant of like something really small uh, small noise peak from the electronics. And for example, you can see this one is a really huge peak for right, 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 right in the center. And then when you search for signal, this area cannot be used to, to search for signal. So we must form like, our like, uh, signal shot. And then, if, and then if you look into this subplot over here, the, the red band is just presenting to me like the single spectra for 20 seconds of data. And the blue line is like the RS spectra from 10,000 single spectra, which is scaling that you expect like the noise should be uh, decreasing, as you expect. So we scan for signal, which is quite trivial. So we can, we can create things like some moving windows of one megahertz moving along from zero to 4,000 megahertz. And then for each moving window, we, we, you, you remove the, the background. And then after that, you fit the Gaussian profile to, to get something like the, the statistical uh, noise power. And then you get the significant level of, 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 your, of the channel, right? So uh, we see some signal. No, of course not, because you, know, like, you have to fit some, like, some signal criteria. The nice thing about the, 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 the brass P is then we can go really high resolution. And then because of the uh, machine, I mean, like, the, 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 the signal width of the, of, like, the light dark matter also. I mean, like, for example, in this case, you have to cover multiple or consecutive channel in your spectrum, right? For example, if you're looking for a signal at 16 gigahertz, you will expect the, uh, a consecutive number of channel, about I mean, like, 10 consecutive channel. Uh, to, to, to go to the next step of like fitting the maximum profile to find if this one is really a signal or not. This one is just a sample. Let's go to the result. We find some really nice signal that fit really well, but we, when we zoom out, it seems to be some, like, some equidistant pick that could from, from usually come from, like, from electronic or station or from TV station because I like to you, we have some bad shielding right now and we need to fix it. Uh, so, Casper, so please. <laughs> So um, now we can, uh, so we find no signal for now. Of course, this is still preliminary. We want to do the, the data analyzing again also. So, but we can put down something like some exclusion limit for now. So I just want to recap like something like some uh, important number over here. So we had two meters of surface area, 30 Kelvin system temperature. The band is 12 to 18 gigahertz. And of course, we only take the data one from one position. So only have the power, right? And this is our sensitivity, I mean, our exclusion limit. So we have the sensitivity up to 10 to the minus 13 of the hidden photon from the band from the 12 to 18 gigahertz. And as you can see, and the end, I mean, like we have the wisdom mix also. This is one of our projects also from, from a long time ago. I mean, like that having that, that covered the huge spiderman space. And following, following the tradition, we have another spiderman, bus peer spiderman, that's covered also the huge spiderman space using like the, the broadband data taking uh, strategies. Finally, I mean, like we have the, some, some plan for future. Of course, I mean, like we, have, we need to do some publication, right? So the community may know better about us. Um, we need, we can do something like some guy hidden photon shirt, if you know I me, mean, like some boy, if someone can, if some terrorist can tip us something like the, uh, um, let's say the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, let's say uh, the uh, distribution of the hidden photon field also. 
And we have to improve the, the, uh, the isolation of the lab to reducing the noise also. And um, of course, we want to look in for like axon with magnet panel. You can see over here, so let me like that the bus P, this is the, the projection for like the sensitivity of bus P experiment with 0.9 Tesla uh, permanent mag magnet. This is quite good also, to be honest, in, 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 in this band and for, the, uh, for, for this experiment. And of course, we can, like I mentioned you, I can, we can ramp up to something like really high resolution. So we are really, have a really high sensitivity to, to like some seasonal mod, uh, modulation signal shots. And of course, BASP is easily scaled. We can scale the frequencies, we can scale the IF bandwidth, we can scale like the conversion surface and the mirror easily. We fund them, yes, we fund them. So, I uh, might be a bit uh, too fast. And, but I mean, like, I can do some recap for like, the talk today. So the BASP is like the implementation of the metal radio astronomy technologies. So this is, for now, I think this is the most powerful hidden photon dark matter telescope with leading sensitivity in this mass range also. And we have like the unique design of the magnet panel that write down the cost of like the electric magnet. And finally, I can say I mean, like, the BASP is a real experiment, really low carbon footprint. Because we don't have to, uh, <laughs> to run something like the, 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 big, the big magnet, right? And then further thing is you can recycle this one into a radio telescope because you have all the components of, of, the, of the radio telescope already, right? And the magnet, we can remove it and make it have a array for souvenir, right? <laughs> yes, but thank you for listening, yeah. Thanks, Larry. So questions? Mm, just out of curiosity, in your product, production surface, you had rather large distances between the panels. Yeah. Is there a reason for that? Mm, yes, we have the, the reason for that one also because something like, uh, because of mostly of, of the, the design. Because something like, um, because of the design, you see like the antenna is placed at like the focal point of the paraboloid, right? So for the design, it should be like obvious, like we can put everything together on one plan, right? So that's why something like we have some distance between them. Of course, we can put any distance, but uh, the, the, there is, there's the angle of like the, 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 the projection angle of like the paraboloid um, the, of, the, uh, of the antenna to the paraboloid. So you, don't want, you, don't have, you, you, you are not allowed to put it too close to like the paraboloid. Uh, you can put it too far. Can it far? But if you have put it too far, then it will be somewhere like maybe some room. You need some like a uh, bigger area also, and it's not really nice also. There is, there is, there is. Uh, so I think this is this is this is the main reason. One at least technical design for for the whole system. Okay, yeah. Thanks. There's another one over there. Thanks. Thank you for the talk. So. Uh, at least, uh, at least the cavity telescope, we have very specific way to calibrate the system, right? Uh, for, for example, you know, put, putting putting the you know, fake signal there. Then, how do you calibrate your, your system, for, particularly for you know, photo, you know, dark photon searches? Yeah, I mean, like, um, for example, I mean, like, I think for like for like the cavity light experiment, you have the traditional of like, like fitting like the signal into the cavity for like something like the black shot, right? And uh, in our case, I mean, like we can do the calibration, for example, for like the, 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 the power by putting a small horn antenna in front of like the big horn antenna and fit some power into it. So this, usually this one is a standard way that they, they, uh, people do the calibration or, uh, in with it, like, let's say, like, to detect the lowest, detect, lowest detectable power in like, the, the, in like the radio astronomy also. So this is what we also do. So I mean, like, we don't have that slide because we just did that like, uh, just a few weeks ago. So we're fitting some, uh, some, uh, some, uh, some, um, uh, some signal up, like, from, like, from really high power to low power. The problem is something when we put our setup over there, like that one, because of like, the sensitivity of the, of, like, the broadband um, horn antenna, it can detect some, even some signal even from the signal generator. So the body of the signal generator can read in some signal. So we have to put a really strong power and then drop down to the level that we could not see the, 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 the interference from like, the signal generator. And then we calculate the signal to noise projection. So we, if, we, if, we, if we keep pushing like, the signal to noise lower and lower and lower, we hit the level of like, about 10 to minus 22 for like, the signal that we can detect for the kind of hidden photon or even for, for, our, for, for our system with this noise temperature. I guess this answers the question, right? Yeah. Thank you very much for this very nice talk and congratulations for your result. 
Um, can you, um, in the same sense of the calibration, can you comment a bit more about, you know, you should the simulation, um, did you do anything to verify like your matching of the antenna to the signal? The or matching of the antenna signal, did yeah. did you just uh, um, trust the simulation? Yeah, they have some, some, uh, some backup slide also. Because something like, if you have like the horn antenna, the, the profile that you expect to have something like, let's say the, 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 the radiation pattern of like the horn antenna, usually it should be something like a, a Gaussian profile with something like with like really high cut off, I mean like really low, uh, uh, low side, really low side lobe, right? So this is like the Gaussian this, uh, far, far field distribution. And when we're running, running some simulation, we also have like the really nice Gaussian uh, distribution at like, the four at light the focal point and face center. So we're quite confident that uh, we have a really good coupling of our horn antenna to the field. Of course, we need to be some, something more, more, more precise, but I will land, but this is the plan for futures. You're right. Okay, yeah. thank you so much.